we also had no possibility of, of getting early intervention for things that related to keeping people out of work. So the lilac funnel are all my people going to their family doctor, getting their sick note. If you get 28 of those notes, you are in our benefit system. And I'm afraid our GPs were very used to writing the notes. So they could give you a note for 12 weeks. <coughs> then you could go back and get another note for 12 weeks. So we were constantly, absolutely constantly, sending people down into our benefit system with no adequate pathway of care that linked health and work together. Now, we have pathways, good pathways for cancer or diabetes, but to do these pathways, two departments of state had to come together. And that really was our, our very difficult thing. And the GPs had no access to occupational health advice. So it really was an unhelpful system that had been taking people out of work and leaving us with this huge number of people in the benefit system. I look very closely at the workplace, and I won't go through this in detail, but just to say inflexible practices, poor managerial training, um, little adaptation for musculoskeletal conditions, and not able to make the business case for investing in health and work. You need to make the business case. Our treasury at home told me not to go and talk to them unless I could make the business case because they weren't prepared um, to listen. A need to make the workplace a good place for prevention and promotion. So lots of factors standing in the way. But these are the reasons in the United Kingdom, the big reasons why people are off work, as I mentioned at the beginning. They're symptoms as well as diseases. And we had no way of really looking carefully at an early um, return to work. And I did a lot of work talking to people who were collecting these notes, these sick notes. And when I asked them why they were not at work, it was a very interesting collection. Some of them said, well, my symptoms are not controlled, so I haven't got my, my, my actual medical treatment early enough. Some of them said, my employer can't make adjustments. With my rheumatoid arthritis, I'd like to go to work an hour later, so I miss the rush hour. Um, I need an ergonomic assessment at work. Or it was, I really don't like my line manager. I really don't like my workplace. I'm also in debt, and I've got lots of family problems. And the whole thing actually stops me going to work. And so it was trying to think about that. So we have very good pathways now at home for serious disease. We've worked very hard to make that important. We have done no work until now to create early and efficient pathways of care for problems in disabilities which impede people's ability to work and therefore affect our economy and our productivity. Um, so one of the, my recommendations to government was to pilot an early interventional service. I didn't have too many recommendations to government. I worked out that if I gave them 40 or 50, they'd say no. Um, so if I perhaps gave them 10 or 12, they might say yes. Um, and I'm not going to go, of course, through all of these. But these are essentially um, my recommendations. And we are in the process of either rolling them out or they've been set up. So, for example, the Council for Health and Work brings together all the organisations involved in, uh, in health and work, and that's obviously was set up quite early on. The two big ones that um, are crucial is the Fit Note and the Fit for Work service. So, we've now got a new note. It may not seem a great change to you, but the law had to be changed. So, on April the 6th, the old note disappeared and the new note came in. And this is, in a way, somewhat subtle, but it's about a different conversation. GPs before never communicated with the employers unless it was in the form of a major report. In this new note, the GP in the box where the arrow is now is asked if, it, if the person could go back to work with adjustments 
to suggest in broad terms, we're not asking them to be occupational health physicians, the sorts of things the person is functionally capable of. So we're asking the GP to say, this is my patient, I know my patient, what are they functionally capable of doing? That goes in that box that you can see there, and then the person takes that note, it will be electronic later this year, thank goodness, to their employer. It is advice, and we found that many, many employers, if this note is written properly, can make the adjustments. So for people with musculoskeletal conditions, that means often with adjustments, they can return to work. So we're now six months into using this note. I'm not going to tell you there aren't challenges. There are huge challenges. The most of all is getting our GPs to do it and to do it well. So we've put in a lot of programs of education. Um, we've got a national program of education for our general practitioners. We've got quite a lot of e-based learning. And the last one, the one for secondary care, is just being, is just being um, put up uh, into an e-learning package. And we've got a helpline where GPs can get occupational health advice. Some of the feedback from the GPs is very good. Some tells me it takes them too long to do it and they need more money to do it. But if you forget that, on the whole, our GPs who filled it in have actually told me it is useful. And there are just one or two of the, of the notes uh, that, uh, or the, the comments that they have sent to me. And then we have a helpline that the government is now funding, which is, is manned by occupational health nurses with a special training in mental health. Because often musculoskeletal conditions and depression and anxiety because of pain go together. They often go together. So we wanted our nurses um, to have extra training in mental health. So we've got, we've got a helpline. Probably for me, the most interesting and important of my suggestions was to try and get a new service into our health system, but a service that worked with the Department of Work and Pensions. So now we have 11 pilot sites around the United Kingdom. It's for people who've been off work for four weeks on, so they're collecting their fourth note. Um, their general practitioner can refer them into this new service, it's a free service, or their employer can refer them in, or the person can refer themselves in. And we're really testing new models of care. And it, it really looks like this, it's a hub with spokes. So the referral goes in, it's a very case managed service, so highly trained case managers with easy access to musculoskeletal um, advice and treatment, um, a, easy access to psychological therapies, and advice about all the things that people don't often talk about, but which affect their ability to be in the workplace, at least certainly in the United Kingdom. And my big um, funnel that you saw before that was very large, everybody going down to the benefit system, my aim is to make it a trickle. I believe being out of work diminishes your self-esteem, your dignity, and has an awful effect on your family. So as far as society is concerned in, at home, my aim is to reduce that and to get it to be um, much smaller. I don't have time to really give you all the results we've got so far from these uh, these pilots, although they're very happy in discussion to tell you more. But it's interesting, of, these are the common barriers. And none of those are strictly medical. And then, of course, there are other barriers. And I've just picked a few of them um, that, uh, that, that have come out of this service. Pain, worrying about pain, I can't go to work with pain. Waiting for investigations. Mental health has come up very high on the list, um, other health issues. Um, and so it, we're beginning to get a pattern of what really stops people working um, in the UK. We're doing a lot of work on encouraging businesses to be a place for prevention and promotion. We have about 
29 million employees in the UK. Um, and if you can do things in the workplace, that will often affect their families. So if you have a good and smoking um, cessation program in the workplace, that might be taken home to someone else who smokes. So we want to encourage the workplace to be doing their bit. Um, and it is a microcosm of society. Big companies actually have people of all ages, gender differences, income and ethnicity. So you can actually get to a sort of mini society. Constantly people have said to me, can't do it, Carol, because I it's got to meet my bottom line. I can't, you know, I've got to show I don't lose money. So the Department of Work and Pensions has developed this tool. You might like to have a look at it. Um, I think it's a very useful tool. In that tool, the first section is, what are my costs in sickness, absence, staff turnover, recruitment of new people, insurance, etc., cetera, etc.? Cetera. Um, and then you can compare yourself with a company um, in the same business um, and of the same size, which is part two. Can I improve? There's lots of tools in there to show you what does work and what you might try. And the fourth part of the tool actually tells you what you might get back in return. So we've been working very closely um, with, our, with our companies we have a big challenge of small and medium-sized companies in the United Kingdom. You probably um, have a similar thing here. But we've, we've put some money into what we call the Challenge Fund, and the government put this fund up for small business awards. Um, so far, we've just awarded 73, but I've just chosen one of the little companies. This is in Scotland, actually, um, where they looked at the health of their employees and they've put things into place um, and uh, they, they've done things after talking to their employees that they would like and you can see um, that they are beginning um, to see a rise in sales and profits. You may say that is not entirely due to this but they believe it's had an influence. So that's really um, what we've been doing at home. This is not peculiar to the United Kingdom. Musculoskeletal diseases affect um, the European Union. 2% of GDP in some cases. We have a fit for work coalition in, um, in, the, in the European Union. And uh, we're trying very hard to spread this message uh, as far as we can. Our principles, work is healthy for patients and society. Work makes economic sense and work is an achievable outcome for all doctors and should be in our training programs. And so what we're trying to do is provide leadership, evidence and disseminate best practice. My final slide, this is what our government said in response to my review. We want to create a society where the positive links between work and health are recognised by all and where everyone aspires to a healthy and fulfilling working life, where health conditions and disabilities are not a benefit, are not a bar to enjoying the benefits of work. So it's a sort of mini revolution. Um, it's taking time, most certainly, um, to take place. We have lots of challenges, but I actually think it is worth doing. It's worth getting <coughs> government departments together. We've got good support now from our trade unions and uh, I'm, I'm working hard on the healthcare professionals. So thank you very much.